A few months back, I visited the Institute of Child Development, my grad school home, to try out a pretend MRI machine while Amanda shared the basics of what it's like to get an MRI. Okay, so now uh, Amanda is going to take me through as if I've never been in an MRI before. She's going to tell me all the, the stuff that we normally tell people when they're trying out an MRI, and then I get to go in the scanner. I'm excited. <laughs> all right, so tell me about the stuff. Perfect. So this is our pretend MRI scanner, and Sarah is going to go in today so that she has a chance to practice what real MRI is like um, to make sure that she likes it before she shows up for her actual MRI appointment because they are expensive. <laughs> so. Sarah, what you see here is this is the tunnel. It's kind of like a tube slide at the playground. And so what you're gonna do in a couple minutes is I'm gonna have you lay down on this bed. Your head is gonna go right here with your nose up and we're gonna slide the bed into the tunnel. Because the way the machine works is we can take pictures of whatever is in the middle of the tunnel. So you're gonna be lying in there with your head, shoulders, waist, up to about your knees or so in the tunnel. And when you're inside the MRI scanner, we don't want you to get bored, you actually get to do things. So you're gonna get to watch videos or play special computer games when you're in there. So the way that you get to watch the videos is you're gonna have this special mask. It sits over the top of your face and it has a little flip mirror yeah. in it. You see this funny curved piece? Mm -hmm. That's where your nose goes. The mirror is gonna be right by, right above your nose. Um, that's where you're going to be able to see your movies or your computer games that you're very playing. important. So those will be right there <laughs> and ready for you. When you're inside the practice machine, we're gonna have you wear these earphones. They are super, super squishy and padded, and so that'll help block out a lot of the loud, funny sounds that the machine makes. And you'll notice here that they have these things that look like oxygen tubes on them. They're not oxygen tubes. You just get to breathe the air that's in the room. These are just special headphones that don't have metal in them, so that's why they have the funny plastic tubing. And why is it that we can't have metal in an MRI? MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging, and so it uses really, really large magnetic fields, subtle changes in them to take the pictures of the inside of our body, and so we don't want to put anything by the MRI scanner that is magnetic because it is a giant magnet and it will get sucked in. Um, so for example, if this was a real MRI scanner, do you see Sarah's pretty earrings? Those would be pulling right in towards there. They could even tear out of her earlobes. It would be horrible. And so we're very, very careful about all those things. We don't let anyone in there who has metal inside their body who might be magnetic. Well, and this is also where I'd like to interject and just say that all of those uh, those medical shows that you see <laughs> where they put people in MRIs and they've got like, you know, their pens and all of that sticking out. No. Not safe. Not safe. That's not, not safe. how it really works. Really works. Not how it really works. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then Sarah's got one more thing that she's going to take into the MRI scanner. This is her <laughs> Nintendo 96. Yeah, uh, yeah real old school. <laughs> um, this is going to be the controller for the computer games that she's playing. Um, and the way that we have these designed is so you can feel the buttons really easy with your fingers so that you don't have to look at your hand while you're playing the computer games. Um, and that's important because you need to hold your head still so you can't be looking up and down the entire time. So let's get Sarah ready to get in. She needs to put on her headphones. Headphones. Ha <laughs> ha. Then we're going to have her climb up on the bed, lay down, head goes here, nose goes up. <laughs> this could be interesting. <laughs> Acrobatics. Uh, Sit down careful. Too big for this. <laughs> Perfect. Right. Now I'm going to give you your video game controller. You can hold it on your stomach. So I'm going to put this down over the top of your head. Okay. You just have to click in these pins. And then here's your mirror. Uh -huh. and you can adjust it once you're farther in so that you can see. Yep. And then once I press the button, you're going to slide back into the tube. It's like a really, really, really slow roller coaster. Awesome. Are you ready? Yes, I Okay, am. here we go. There she goes, and Sarah is pretty tall, so almost her entire legs are outside of the MRI scanner. How are you feeling in there, Sarah? Oh, I'm feeling great. Perfect, so if Sarah was a real child participant at our research lab, we would have her practice watching some of the DVDs that she'd get to see at the scanner and playing some of the computer games that she'd be playing, just to make sure that she's completely comfortable and she knows what to expect when she comes back for her real MRI scan. Still doing okay in there? Yep. Okay, great. All right, are you ready to come out? I am. Okay, here we go. things, reasons why people can't get MRIs, especially little kids, like if you bring them in here, what are the things that, uh, that tell you, you know, maybe this, this kid isn't quite ready for this kind of thing? One of the biggest things is just that kids are uncomfortable. Um, sometimes you have kids come in here and you can tell that they're anxious about getting inside the practice MRI, and we never want to make anyone uncomfortable, so if they don't like the practice one, that's a big reason for not having them come back and do another MRI scan later on. Some of the things that tend to make kids uncomfortable sometimes are mostly the sounds. The sounds that MRI machine makes, they're really loud, and so they can be surprised. 
surprising if you're not used to them. And so we try to play the sounds for them when they're here so they have a chance to get used to them, and we send everyone home with a CD too so they have more chances to listen to the sounds, get acclimated, have nothing be a surprise. The last thing is moving. So you have to hold really still to get nice MRI images of the brain. The MRI machine works, we tell kids, kind of like a really old camera. So if you take a picture of someone who's running with a real old camera, they usually come out blurry. Same thing happens in there. If you're moving your head around, all the images of your brain are so blurred that we can't really see anything. Um, and so we watch children when they're in there, we watch their legs, um, we try to watch what their head is doing too and give them some feedback about trying to hold still. And for some kids that's easier and for some kids that's harder. So what if people have like piercings or tattoos oh, yeah. or those kinds of things? Are there, are there things that you look for as sort of a checklist of no, we can't actually ever ask you to participate in an MRI? Yeah, so you can't have any metal implanted in your body that is magnetic. You can have piercings as long as they're removed when you go into the MRI scanner, then you're safe. Um, and sometimes we don't let people come in and have MRIs just for research studies if they have really large or certain types of tattoos um, because it's possible there could be metallic pigment in the inks. But then the biggest thing when you work with kids is, what do kids have in their mouth that's metal? Braces. And so we typically don't do MRI scans um, with children who have braces. They're actually glued on your teeth, so they're not likely to move at all when you're inside the magnetic field, um, but they really distort the pictures, so we can't see the front of the brain very well anyway. Yeah, that's the other thing about metal is that it, because of the way the machine works, it can actually, if you have braces, it can actually like basically look like half of your brain. An explosion in your frontal lobe. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so it doesn't, you don't get good pictures if you have metal you know, hanging out in your head. Well, this is really fun. Thanks for giving us the tour yeah. and reminding me what it's like to be in an MRI machine. So cozy. I, I had so fondly missed it. <laughs> Not really. Um, but it's, it's so fun and it's great that we can get we can get so much information from uh, from just some pictures that we get to take uh, and that we get to use it with kids of all ages now. Infant MRI is something that's kind of new. It's something that was not really a thing that was being done when I was in graduate school, even just a few years ago. And so it's exciting to hear that there are new opportunities for studying how the brain develops. Cool. Well, thanks again, and we'll see you next time. So if you have more questions about neuroimaging, leave them in comments. And if you missed the last neuroimaging video, you can find it here. And don't forget to check out my recent video on resumes and cover letter tips, because next week I'll talk job interview do's and don'ts. So subscribe and check back for that. And as always, thanks for watching.